Hey math students, how you doing? Let's analyze a graph today. I've got a got this graph here next to me, and uh, it's pretty uh, it's pretty wild looking. Kind of goes all over the place here. I guess the first question I have about it is, is this a function? Um, I think it is. You know why? Well, because there's no place on this graph where I can draw a vertical line and intersect it in more than one place. And if that's the case, yes, it's a function. If I could draw a vertical line there and it could hit the graph in more than one place, it would not be a function. But this time, I think it is. So now that I know it's a function, um, what's the domain of this function? Remember, the domain is all the possible values of the, uh, the, the independent variable. And the independent variable is x. So that means I want to know all the possible values of x of this function. Let me start on the far left at x equals negative 9. And what I can see is I can just move along here and never lift up my pencil, which tells me this is a continuous function, no gaps. And I can make it all the way over to x equals 10. That means my domain is going to be x goes from negative 9 to 10. All right? Now let's do the range. Now first off, let me tell you what not to do, because this is what a lot of people do. They start over here on the left, just like we did for the domain. And they say, OK, I'm going to start here at the left. This time I'm looking at my y's, so I'm going to say, y equals 1, and then I'm going to get, get over here to the right where y is negative 2, so that means my range goes from negative 2 to 1. No, don't do it that way. If you were listening to me there, stop listening, okay? That's not how you do it. You're looking at your range, which means you're looking at your y's. You're going from the bottom up to the top, not the left to the right, okay? So I want to go down here to my lowest point, which is going to be at negative 4, and then up here to my highest point, which is going to be a positive 4, and that tells me my range is going to be negative 4 to positive 4. And if you're saying, well, what about this stuff over here? This doesn't matter. Yeah, it matters. It's just that it's not as low as this point, and it's not as high as this point. Okay? It doesn't matter for the range. It matters for other things. Okay, so now we got our domain. we got our range. Let's talk about intercepts. Okay, the intercepts are the parts, the points, that the uh, graph... Uh, where the graph hits the axes, okay, where it intersects the axes. So the first one is our y-intercept. There it is right there. And uh, there can only be one y-intercept, if that. Sometimes there can be zero y-intercepts, that's fine. But not more than one, if it's a function. Um, and what about x-intercepts? Well, we have several of those, and that's perfectly fine. So let's get some uh, coordinates on those. We see that it intersects the x-axis at negative 3, 0, 2.70, and 7.50. Another way of saying that is that the zeros of this function are negative 3, 2.7, and 7.5. And all that means is y of x, sorry, f of x equals 0 when x equals negative 3, 2.7, or 7.5. And of course the y-intercept there is uh, 0, negative 2.5. Okay, got that down. So we were just answering when, uh, what is x when y equals 0? What about what is x when y is greater than 0? Well, uh, we got this whole part right here. And the way that we would describe that is with uh, an interval. We would say x goes from negative 9 to negative 3, because uh, x, the x-coordinate at this point is negative 9. x-coordinate at this point is negative 3. And then we have this whole point right, that, that uh, uh, section right there. So that means... Uh, x is going to go from negative 3 all the way over to, uh, it looks about 3.7. Then we got this section here where uh, x goes from 3.7 to 7.5. And then finally this section over here where x goes from 7.5 to 10. Now, when is f of x greater than, uh, than 0? In the red parts here, the parts that are in the northern hemisphere, okay, north of the x-axis. So that means f of x is going to be 0 on the interval. x goes from negative 9 to 3, union 3.7 to 7.5, okay? Meaning if f of x is greater than 0 on this graph, then x has either got to be in this area over here or in this area over here, okay? And then what about less than 0? Well, do the same thing, only look at these parts down below the x-axis, okay? Uh, so this is where... Uh, uh, x goes from negative 3 up to 3.7, that's this part right here, and then from, uh, from 7.5 up to 10, 
and that's this point right here. Okay, cool. Let's keep on going. So now we're going to look at when x is constant, that is flat horizontal, or increasing, going up like that, or decreasing, going down like that. Okay. Remember, when you're looking at increasing or decreasing, always go left to right. So the first thing we notice is we're going to go left to right. The first thing we notice is for one unit, um, x is constant. It's not changing. So we're going to say f of x is constant, not x is constant, f of x is constant. Uh, f of x is constant on the interval x uh, goes from negative 9 to negative 8. So from here to here. Then what happens? It starts going up. So it increases. And it stops increasing right there, and then it starts to decrease. Okay? But on this part right here, we have that x increases from negative 8 up to negative 5. So we're writing f of x is increasing on the interval x goes from negative 8 to negative 5. Then what happens? It falls. Okay? And we go all the way down here to negative 1, negative 4. Okay? But as far as the x coordinates go, we're going from negative 5 here down to negative 4. So it's decreasing on the interval x uh, from negative 5 to, uh, oops, I said negative 4, from negative 5 to negative 1. That's what I meant to say. Okay? Now what happens? Well, now we go up again. So what are we going to do? We're going to, we're going to go to this increasing uh, statement here. We're going to add a little piece there. We're going to say, okay, it goes from negative 5 to negative, or negative 8 to negative 5, but also from negative 1 to 1, this part right here. And then what happens? It's constant from 1 to 3. So let's add that up there. Then what happens? It goes up again from x equals 3 to x equals 5. So we add that piece on. And then it kind of wiggles around. It goes down, and then it goes up, and then it goes down, and then it stays constant. Okay? And so each time, all I do is I just add another interval to these lines here. And now I have my full description of the uh, increasing, constant, and decreasing intervals of this, uh, of this function. It's constant on this interval here, or this, this, this union of intervals. It's increasing on this union of, of intervals here, and it's decreasing on these intervals here. All right, now let's look at when we, when, when an interval, uh, or, I'm sorry, when a function increases and then decreases, well, what did it cross over? It crossed over a little hilltop there, didn't it? Okay? It crossed over this point here, or perhaps this point here, or perhaps this point here. Okay? In each case, it's increasing on the left and then it's decreasing on the right. These are called relative minima, or actually, well, either relative minima or local minima. Okay? Uh, the, I got that wrong. They are local maxima. Yes, because they're the highest point. Silly man. Okay, the minima are going to be the lowest points, and these are the highest points. So uh, the local maxima are this point here, negative 5, 4, this point here, 5, 3, or this point here, 7, 2. That's one way to say it. And if you say it that way, people will understand what you're saying. But it's not really the best way to say it. Technically, what you should say is that the local maxima are 4, because the maximum is, is a number. It's not actually a point. It's how high you're getting. It's a y-coordinate. So the maximum is 4 at x equals negative 5. That's that one there. Or 3 at x equals 5. Actually, I shouldn't say or. It's and. The, all, all three of these are uh, uh, maxima. Uh, 3 at x equals 5. Or 2 at x equals 7. That's really the, the correct way to, say, uh, to describe the local maxima. And of course, if we have local maxima, we also have local minima. Okay? These are the lowest points in their little neighborhoods, okay? And a neighborhood is just sort of the points around that point there. There's one right there, and there's one right there. Their coordinates are, of course, negative one, negative four, and six, one. So how do we say this? Well, we could say, oops, oops, uh, let, me, let me move this out of the way, okay. Uh, the local minima are negative one, negative four, and six, one. That's one way to say it. Uh, another way to say it would be the local minima are negative four, at x equals negative 1, and 1 at x equals 6. All right? So the local minimum, and it's a weird word, okay? The singular ends in um, so minimum is a singular. And the plural ends in a, 
minima is a plural. It's, it's a Latin ending, and Latin endings can be kind of weird, but they're also kind of cool, so I like them. Uh, so the, uh, the, each local minimum is kind of like the lowest point in its little neighborhood, okay? And each local maximum is the highest point in its little neighborhood, okay? But what about the highest point of all? Well, that would be a global maximum. And this is the highest point of all. Four is the highest uh, y-coordinate that the function ever achieves. And so that global maximum is four at x equals negative five. I'm saying it the same way that I said over here. And the global minimum is, of course, down here at the, low, the lowest point. It's negative four at x equals negative one. Now, earlier you heard me say relative maximum and relative minimum. Yeah, there's actually two different ways of describing these. You can use the words local and global, or you can say it's the absolute maximum over here and it's the relative maxima and relative minima over here, okay? So either set of words, just know that those are synonyms, okay? All right, that is, uh, uh, that's a good start for you for um, uh, analyzing functions, and I hope it helped. See you next video. Bye-bye.